I want to give you an overview of my 3D printed pocket operator case you see here, the different stages of prototyping it went through, how it's assembled, and after that I will unpack the order from Shapeways that I received today. Shapeways is a professional printing service where you can upload your designs, choose a material and have it printed with a laser centering process, for most materials at least. Uh, this print should be of much higher quality and detail compared to my own prints you see here. First, these are some very early prototype parts, experimenting with different button designs and ways to make the LEDs visible. This is one of the first partial prints to reduce printing time. It tests the alignment of the buttons, display, potentiometers and also the size of the audio connector up here. And these two are the first full prints to test the overall look and feel. The potentiometers were not fully covered in these as you can see here. Uh, later I decided to make the case a few millimeters thicker to get some more clearance to the display and also to be able to cover the potentiometers. Also the size of the LED windows uh, was increased later. This was the first fully functional prototype and this one is a slight upgrade with an improved locking mechanism for the back plate. They work quite well, so all the buttons move freely. You can see the LEDs if you look at it from the right angle. So I'm quite happy how they turned out. By the way, the 3D models and also the free cut project file for these cases uh, is available for download on Thinkiverse. I will put a link in the video description. So now let's put these aside and have a look at the print from Shapeways. So here it is. This is printed in strong and flexible black material with a raw finish, so it has a slightly rough surface, it's not polished. I did some modifications on this compared to the cases you see here, uh, mainly some material savings and some tighter tolerances for the buttons, button guides, locking mechanism and so on. I still suspect it may fit together a bit loosely, but we will see. Then here are the control buttons in purple polished material with the PU20 symbols on them. These are the same buttons actually, just in black raw finish. These are the sequencer buttons again with the PU20 symbols. And these are the light guides for the LEDs. So let's unpack all the buttons. I will put a close-up picture of these into the video later. And the light guides. So I'm very curious if they will actually work. These are printed from transparent acrylic material. All the other parts are printed uh, with strong and flexible plastic. Should be some kind of nylon material, I guess. So let's cut these apart. The reason I joined the parts together is to save some of the handling fees. So you pay about 
two dollars or two fifty for a black material in handling fee per part. So I will clean this up later. Same for the buttons here, so if they were not joined together, uh, you would pay I think 150 per button for a white material, so to quickly cut this apart. Okay, I'm back after cutting all the buttons from the sprue. So let's see how they fit into the case. They move without resistance, that's nice. They can rotate a little bit in the guides, but that's okay. It's from the front. There's some slight space around the button, but overall they fit very nice. So now let's see for the case. This is where I actually expected that it may be a bit too loose. So you can see here the tolerance is a little bit too big. The locking mechanism still engages slightly. But we can do a quick fix for this. So I will just put some of this soft material here. On the bottom of the case of the back plate. Yes, much better. So you can push it down to unlock. lock it like that. Okay, so now let's disassemble this one and put the arcade in the new case. This is still the old version of the locking mechanism but it works in a similar way. You have to push down on top here and pop off the back plate. You can see the hanger is still intact and also the this wire stand can can stay attached. So let's carefully move it out. Careful here because I don't want to have the buttons fly all over the place. Okay, now. So, comes out like this. There are all the buttons here. Now, let's see how it fits in the new case. Without the buttons first. nicely. There are some tolerances here, but we will see about that later. So one of the most interesting parts of this professionally printed case are the light guides. I'm very interested how these turn out. Okay, they are fully in, nicely flush with the front. So let's see how it turns out. Have a look at the pattern. 
we can see some LEDs. Hmm. Not too bad. So this could be improved by polishing the surfaces of the light guides a bit, but for now mm, I will keep them like that and let's see how it looks when it's fully assembled. Okay, <coughs> I've pushed in all the light guides and sorted the buttons. So now let's insert the buttons. Here. The chord button, the effect button, play, record, write, so all the buttons are in, well, let's it together. Okay. Mm. Turned out quite nice, so there is not too much wiggling of the buttons. Let's see how the light guides work. Hmm. Quite happy how this turned out. So definitely easier to see the LEDs uh, and then without the light guides, so they are visible from any angle. They are not extremely bright, but um, I think that's not a problem. Okay, so I think as a conclusion what could be improved and what I maybe will improve is um, I will make the outer shell a little bit smaller to have less play on the pocket operator PCB and also to have the back plate fit more tightly. The buttons could be made a little bit bigger, maybe 0.5 or 0.25 millimeters I will have a look at that, but mainly I think the auto shell, the auto shell will be modified to make it a little bit tighter fit.